We're going to continue our problem solving in chemistry practice. We're now going to move on to solving metric unit problems. First, make sure you feel very comfortable with using dimensional analysis to solve simple problems. Remember, you're simply using a series of conversion factors to convert one unit to another unit in the problem. Your steps will remain the same for these metric unit problems. You're going to identify your starting and ending units. You're going to set up your conversion factors so that your units will cancel. You're going to multiply all your numerators and divide by the product of your denominators. And then you're going to check those final units and that final answer. Dimensional analysis is very helpful to converting between metric units. Obviously, you need to be familiar with your metric units prior to using this method, but you can also have a handout chart with them available um, temporarily until you become more familiar with them. Let's look at a setup of a problem that converts 100 megagrams to centigrams. So you're going from the large unit megagram to the smaller unit centigram. And there's no need to go in between all of the units between these, but you are going to go, this is your base unit, you're going to go from megagram to the base unit gram, and then from the base unit gram to centigrams. And that's what you're going to do for all of these problems. At the most, you're going to have two conversion factors between the largest and the smallest units possible. You will always go through that base unit because it's only the conversion factors between your base unit and the other units that you are responsible for memorizing. So if we take our 100 megagrams, we will first say 1 megagram is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the 6, or a million grams, which you're going to use scientific notation. And then, that's at your base unit right here. Then you'll take that base unit and say 1 gram is equivalent to 100 centigrams. And your final unit, centigrams, is what you are looking for. Then you will simply multiply these numbers across the top and get 1 times 10 to the 10 centigrams. You also could set this problem up a different way. You could start with 100 megagrams. Now let's look at the logic. We know that the unit down here has to be megagram. We're going to the base unit gram. And then we're going from the base unit gram to centigram. So we know the units have to be set up this way in order to cancel. Now simply put in the correct conversion factors. We could say 1 gram is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the negatives. This is also a true conversion factor statement. And we could say 1 centigram is a hundredth, or 1 times 10 to the negative 2 grams. Both of these methods are valid for setting up your problem. just depends on which way you look at the conversion factor. Either method will give you this answer, which is the correct answer. So if we look very quickly, at these two problems, let's go back. If we look at these two problems, we can see that both methods, whether we said one megagram is a million grams, or one gram is a millionth of a megagram, one gram is a hundred centigrams, or we simply could have said one centigram is a hundredth of a gram. These are both valid ways to work the problem. Let's look at going from gigameters to nanometers. So you need to have some idea that gigameter is the larger unit going down to nanometers and the base unit is simply meters. So we need conversion factors to go between these two units. Taking our 1 times 10 to the third gigameters, 
setting up our problem so that gigameters cancels and putting in the correct conversion factor, one gigameter is a billion or one times ten to the ninth meters right there and one meter is a billion nanometers or one times ten to the ninth nanometers. Our calculated answer, one times ten to the twenty-first nanometers. If we look at another way of setting this up, we're using exactly the same method. We're still going from gigameters to meters to nanometers. Our conversion factors in both of these problems are absolutely correct. One gigameter is a billion meters. One meter is a billion nanometers. You also can say one meter is a billionth of a gigameter and one nanometer is a billionth of a meter. To know whether to use the negative exponent or the positive exponent, you simply need to make sure you know which of these is the larger unit. If you put a one on the larger unit in your conversion factor, you will always have a positive exponent. If you put a one on the smaller of the two units, you will always have a negative exponent in your conversion factor. Ten kilograms is equal to how many micrograms? Ten kilograms is our starting point. One kilogram is a thousand grams. One gram is a million micrograms, leaving us with one times ten to the ten micrograms. Again, by now you can see that these problems are set up again exactly the same. Our units are canceling, leaving us with the correct unit that we're looking for. Our conversion factors are different because of where we've chosen to put the one. In this problem, we chose to put a 1 on the larger unit, giving us a positive exponent on the smaller unit. In this problem, we chose to put a 1 in the smaller unit, which puts a negative exponent on the larger unit. Either method will give us the same and the correct answer.